The Kansas Aviation Museum tells the story of aviation. It's about early airplanes and the people who built them, where they built them, how they built them, why they built them. If that doesn't sound interesting to you, then you've never been. Anyone who breathes loves aviation. You know, we dream about flying. We dream about floating through the air and seeing things. You know, and I personally have had the experience of shooting air to air from one airplane to another for the last 50 years. And so for me, I get turned on to aviation, maybe in a slightly different way than most people do, but who doesn't love airplanes? And to get up close and personal around the airplanes is a thrill, it's exciting. There is also a good story here about the museum itself. It was one of the nation's first airports. Anyone and everyone made a stop in Wichita back in the day. Amelia Earhart landed here. Gregory Peck, Howard Hughes, Charles Lindbergh. Fred Astaire, while waiting for a flight, tap danced across the atrium floor. The Wichita Municipal Airport had real glamour. This building is a beautiful Art Deco building uh, funded by the WPA projects in the 1930s. Uh, they began construction in 1929, but then of course the Great Depression hit and when that took place, funding dried up and so they weren't able to actually complete the building for a number of years. So it took a little while. We got there, we got the building open in 1935, but you see the Art Deco preservation within it, whether it's the uh, terrazzo tiles that we have in here, whether it's the decor on the ceiling, or whether it's the 11,000 pound mural on the front of the building made from a Wichita product called Cartholite. That mural out front has never been touched up in terms of paint because it does not need it. Its preservation ability keeps us from having to paint that. So there's so many neat architectural pieces in here that are really just worthwhile. Constructed in 1935, the Art Deco style building remains a real beauty. The facility was only used as a commercial airport for less than 20 years. It was made part of McConnell Air Force Base in 1951 and then abandoned in 1984. It would be years before anyone would pass through the old airport again. When we got it, it was a, a pigeon's roost. I mean, it had artificial ceilings in it, and I'm sure we took down a lot of insulation that was uh, contaminated, <laughs> but we didn't know it, we just did it. But a group called the Wagon Masters, right after we got the building, came out for several weekends in a row and just worked their tails off, carrying tons and tons of debris and trash and cleaning the place up. Since 1991, the Kansas Aviation Museum has been telling a new story, one of grit, gusto, and impossible grace. You're looking and touching and feeling history. And I think about when I see an airplane like this, the individuals that flew it. Back then, a pilot really was a pilot. Today with GPS and everything else, you can probably teach just about anybody to fly. But back then, you really did fly by the seat of your pants. The museum is home to the Kansas Aviation Hall of Fame, an impressive lineup of aviation heavyweights by any measure. I mean, we have in the Kansas Aviation Hall of Fame the designers of the airplanes, the astronauts that flew in the shuttle. I mean, we have the whole gamut of people on display. And it's not just the men, but the women who contributed to the aviation. It also houses a huge archive with thousands of records, schematics, books, photos, and more. There's an all-ages learning center with hands-on exhibits and flight simulators. For many, the real draw is the world-class collection of one-of-a-kind aircraft and aircraft engines. We have the vintage aircraft. We have those planes that have served in wars. And that's huge because when you can see the history of those planes, how they served in, in our, our, our country in the wars, and actually having occasionally met part of the crew that worked on a bomber, that's huge. Many of the planes were built or lovingly restored by museum volunteers. Restoration is a big story. Sometimes, you get pieces and parts, a rusted shell of 
of a fuselage truss, and there's a nameplate that goes with what this truss would be. And the volunteers have to take that and go back to the original plans that exist on this airplane and basically build the airplane almost as if it were in the manufacturing facility and build it basically from the ground up, only knowing that they've got maybe pieces and parts of the airplane to make it come to life so we can see what the designers meant for that airplane to look like. The aviation story in Kansas is aviation's story. The dreams, dedication, innovation, and work ethic that allowed us to soar to new heights. No one tells this story like the Kansas Aviation Museum. It goes beyond just the story of aviation as a whole when we look at it in a, in a macro view. When you bring it down to a micro view, you realize that pretty much everybody in this community has somehow been touched or affected by aviation. So it's not just a, a big picture view, it's really the view of protecting history that affects every single Wichita.